and welcome back to Beauty Bee. Today I'm going to be testing an assertion that I've encountered countless times on Reddit threads and in comment sections over the years. Does ColourPop keep their prices low by providing the customer with smaller amounts of product than most brands? That is, looking at the price per ounce, is ColourPop truly comparable to other drugstore brands? Or are higher end brands like MAC, Tarte, and Too Faced a more fair comparison. In this video, I compare five types of cosmetics that ColourPop offers against similar products from drugstore and high-end lines sold at Ulta and Sephora in the US. For the sake of time, and because these products are the most interesting in ColourPop's line to me personally, I focus on color cosmetics in this video, but if there's interest in another video, covering other items like face products, mascara, eyeliner, and brow products, I would be happy to make a follow-up. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested. As I mentioned, I examined the price per ounce of five types of products, eyeshadow, powder blush, cream blush, bullet lipsticks, and slim pencil or crayon style lipsticks, similar to ColourPop's Lippy Sticks packaging. I selected eight products for comparison from Ulta's bestsellers. In each category, there are three to four high-end products and four to five drugstore priced items. For a couple products, uh, specifically the cream blush and slim style lipstick, Ulta did not have eight products for comparison. I then looked to Sephora for similar types of products. I recorded the regular prices and in one case, what appears to be a clearance price, and net weights of all products. Now, after goodness knows how long of an introduction, it's finally time to look at spreadsheets. Ah, uh, this feels like home. We'll start with eyeshadow. All five of these sheets have a very similar format, which I'll quickly run through on this first one. The brand of item is given at the far left, followed by the price in dollars and the net weight in both ounces and grams. The columns that are most applicable to our question of interest are the prices per unit weight. I've sorted on these unit weights. The most expensive products are given at the top and the items at the bottom cost the least per unit weight. I have highlighted ColourPop's row for each table in yellow so that you can spot it more easily. For eyeshadow, I specifically looked at ColourPop's Going Coconuts 9-pan palette. I compared two other mid-sized neutral palettes of powder shadows, so no pressed glitters or super shock style cream shadows are included. I'm looking in the range of 8 to 15 pans, so a fairly mid-sized palette, keeping two browns and rose shades. I was actually a bit surprised by the results here. The ABH Soft Glam palette was by far the most expensive per ounce almost twice as the second most, which was the pre-made MAC palette in Nude Model. ColourPop ends up right in the middle of the drugstore price shadows, with CoverGirl and Milani being more expensive by weight, and Physicians Formula, Maybelline, and Wet n Wild being cheaper. Overall, ColourPop places sixth out of nine in price per ounce on eyeshadow. Let's move on to cream blushes or multi-use creams for the cheek and eyes and lips in a stick form. Interestingly, ColourPop ends up six out of nine in this category as well. The Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek Stick is the biggest surprise to me among these blushes. It's four times the size of most of the other products. And per ounce, it is just a hair less expensive than the ColourPop blush sticks. Otherwise, this list shakes out largely as I would have expected, with the high-end brands at the top, followed by the mid-range leaning drugstore brands, and with e.l.f. and Wet n Wild taking up the rear. From cream blush, we hop over to powder blush, specifically a single powder blush in a compact. ColourPop often tacks an extra dollar or two onto their blushes for collaborations, presumably to pay for royalties or as part of the compensation for the influencer or company involved. So I'm going to stick with a blush from their recent Mauve collection, which isn't affiliated with any brand or influencer. In this category, ColourPop is the third cheapest per ounce. 
priced very comparably to Maybelline. As usual, e.l.f. is by far the cheapest, and the most surprising item on this list is probably Ulta's house brand blush, which is very close to being the same price as the MAC blushes when you look at them by weight. So, so far, we've seen that when ColourPop's eyeshadows and blushes are examined by weight, they have a pretty similar price to a middle-of-the-road drugstore brand. At this point, I would compare ColourPop's prices to those of Maybelline or CoverGirl. The lipsticks are where most of the comments on ColourPop's stingy product sides have come up. Let's look at the bullet lipsticks first. ColourPop's Cream Finish Luxe lipsticks are $8 for 0.12 ounces. That's a little bit smaller than most drugstore brands, but a bit larger than the Creme Finish MAC lipsticks or the Creamy Vice lipsticks from Urban Decay. Price-wise, ColourPop is back in sixth place in this category. By price per ounce, ColourPop is most similarly priced to the Flower Petal Pout lipsticks. Finally, for the lippy sticks, I included in this category lip sticks, lip pencils, and lip crayons that are long and slender. Some examples are the Revlon HD Gel lipsticks that you have probably seen on my channel if you've been around for a while, or the Fenty Mademoiselle lipsticks. I really like this style of product, and I've panned several lippy sticks and Revlon HD Gel lipsticks over the years. In this category, ColourPop fell right in the middle by price per ounce, the fifth most expensive of the nine. The ColourPop lippy sticks are very similarly priced to the Mademoiselle lipsticks from Fenty by weight, though it is worth noting here that the Fenty lipsticks appear to be on clearance and originally would have been significantly more per ounce than ColourPop's. If we compare lippy sticks to bullet lipsticks, I can begin to see where the complaints about ColourPop's prices may have stemmed from. The lippy sticks are almost exactly three times more per ounce than their own Creme Luxe lipsticks. However, that's pretty similar across the board. I do not have equivalent products for all the brands on these two lists, but the least expensive lippy stick style product by ounce is about three times more per ounce than the least expensive cream bullet lipstick. And the most expensive slum lipstick is around two and a half times more per ounce as the most expensive bullet tube. As a consumer, that's good to know. You're paying a premium for this slim format lipsticks, and that may or may not be worth it to you. Comparing like products, ColourPop's Color Cosmetics seem to be pretty on par pricing-wise with the mid-level drugstore brands. In all five categories, ColourPop was between the fifth and seventh most expensive by price per ounce out of the nine products compared. Its products were pricier than those from e.l.f. or Wet n' Wild, but they seemed generally similar to a Maybelline, CoverGirl, or Revlon price point. Notice that I haven't compared quality in this video. I have not tried many of the items I've talked about, and even if I had, Quality is somewhat a matter of personal preference. I also want to note that I'm not taking into account features like cruelty-free or vegan status, what countries these countries, sorry, excuse me, what countries these companies manufacture in, or company ethics that may be important factors in your purchasing decisions. This is not a perfectly scientific way to look at prices, and I'm not going to pretend it is but I tried to keep my preferences out of this comparison. Before I head out, I wanted to talk a little bit about when the price by weight of a product actually matters. Throughout this video, I've essentially been looking at price per unit weight as a stand-in for price per use. However, built into that is the assumption that the product will be completely used up. If you are not going to finish a product, the price per ounce is largely irrelevant. For something you are very unlikely to pan, looking at price per use is likely a better way to determine which products might be better for your budget. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, 
please like and consider subscribing for more budget conscious beauty content. Let me know if you would like to see a follow up video on other products from ColourPop. Thanks for watching, and I hope I'll catch you next time. Bye!